On today's episode, the chip shortage and the five stages of auto industry supplier grief. Today's episode of End of the Line is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.tv today. Now, we're all familiar with the five stages of grief. Now, that was first stated by Swiss-American psychiatrist Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, and it's the process by which people experience grief. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Now, if you work in the OEM or Tier 1 part of the auto industry, you know grief. The latest headache is the global shortage in integrated circuit chips that has hobbled production just as the industry is starting to claw back from the COVID-19 catastrophe. Now, why has integrated circuit production stopped auto assembly? Well, there are a couple of reasons. One is the disruption to supply chains worldwide due to COVID-19. Another is the new US restrictions on Chinese technology that will likely to be reviewed by the new Biden administration. But none of this is new. In the late 40s, supply chain disruption slowed auto production so much that automakers created movie shorts to explain to the buying public why they had to wait months for a new car. At one point, they were buying nuts and bolts at hardware stores to keep the lines running. Now, the real root of this problem, in my opinion, is how OEMs procure parts and assemblies. And that takes us back to the five stages of grief. The five stages of OEM supplier grief are, one, supplier rationalization. As OEMs demanded lower and lower prices from tier ones, they realized that the only way to get those lower prices was to increase order volumes. Now, as a result, they offered most or all the business to single source vendors and locked them in with long-term contracts. Two, disruption. Now, not the good kind, but the kind where entire assembly plants go down because someone missed a delivery window in a just-in-time production process. And it doesn't take much. A fire in a supplier plant, a container ship that sinks in a typhoon, even a pileup on an interstate can cripple a large assembly operation. Three, integration. Realizing the vulnerability of single supplier sourcing, OEMs start to invest in them or buy them outright, gaining control of the production process to control the disruption risk. Four, spin-off. At some point, the financial people up front realize that those captive parts divisions could be far more profitable if they were free to sell to everyone in the automotive industry rather than just their parent companies. That unlocks shareholder value and the OEMs spin those divisions off as independent tier one companies. Now Ford did this with Visteon and GM with Delphi. And finally, five, supplier rationalization again. It goes full circle with OEMs dealing with multiple suppliers and high costs, rinse and repeat. This time the bottleneck is integrated circuits, but in the past it's been rubber tires, window glass, even sheet steel. So why did people like me enthusiastically embrace this low margin headache filled industry? Well, I don't know. And most people I knew in the business didn't either. But there's a strange romance to automotive manufacturing. If you could keep your blood pressure under control and a pack of Rolades in your pocket, it was a great way to earn a living. It still is, but it's much more complex now. But I'd still recommend it to anyone. This episode was brought to you by engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification button for our next episode. For deeper engineering content, visit engineering.tv for exclusive shows not found on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.